Welcome everyone to the bi-monthly Synergy training. Um, this is the beginner training, so please feel free to ask any question and we'll be happy to answer it for you. I've got Maggie here today. She's helping me field all the questions. If you could just put them in chat or the Q&A box so that Maggie can get those to me, that would be great. And what I was going to do today, of course, any question you have, please post it. I'll be happy to answer it. While you're posting your questions, I thought I'd get us started by talking a little bit about the, rub um, the repertory and the order of the rubrics. Um, let me just go ahead and open my SHS program. And I think it's helpful to kind of have this knowledge so that when you're navigating the repertories, you can just know how to do it better. So at Kent's, um, of course, the chapters are all in a particular order, but within the chapters, there's a certain order too. With Kent, with Reliable, I believe the Complete does it as well. Now, certainly there's some repertories that don't follow this order, but this is the order of Kent. So I'm gonna just open, for instance, the stomach chapter here in, I'm gonna go into the reliable and I'm gonna open the stomach chapter and explain how each chapter, when you're talking about the organization of Kent or the reliable, is, is set up where you have uh, sides first. And so you, you see you've got morning, um, Actually, in the stomach chapter, you don't have sides because nobody says the left side of my stomach hurts. But like, mm -hmm. for instance, let's go into the abdomen. And here you can see you've got the sides and you go into those. Then you have the left, right. So depending on the chapter, if it doesn't apply, it's not in the chapter. But if it does apply, um, you'll see it. And so here we are in the stomach chapter again. And after sides, comes time and so you can see and it goes chronologically um so you see you've got morning before afternoon so that's not alphabetical so that's a time um, a time element that comes after sides and then after that you can see after night then you have the section that's about conditions and circumstances that's the longest section and that, that goes A to Z. And then after that, you have a section about the extension. So here we are in the stomach chapter. And let's say you're looking for stomach, um, a stomach issue is extending to the back or something like that. And let's say you just type on your keyboard EX, trying to find extension. Where you come is you come into the section about conditions and circumstances, excitability, um, exercises aggravating the stomach, you know, again, the modalities and the circumstances. Um, and so in that case, in order to get to extensions, you have to type EXT. And now you can see we're at the bottom of that circumstances section of the chapter. You can see we're winding down, wine aggravates, um, wrinkled sensation, writhing and wriggling, yawning. Now you can see extending. And so you can go into that. It has zero remedies in that overview um, rubric, but you go into it. I just hit the right arrow on my keyboard. I'm into the sub rubrics of extending. And you can see stomach extending to the axilla, extending backward, you know, and so on. So that's how, um, that's how it's organized. Now, I'm not sure why, but this is just the way of Kent. <laughs> not sure why they decided to put extensions at the bottom of the circumstances. And then below the extensions are locations of the stomach. So for instance, epigastrium, the posterior part, et cetera. So I just thought I'd review that. I thought it might be helpful for you to understand how extensions are below circumstances so that if you are looking for them, you need to go below the circumstances. And now I think what I'll do is I'm gonna show more about the repertory and finding rubrics 
And I wanna compare that uh, action in the repertory module to the global search. Because um, I, I say it all the time that global search is really the best part of, in my opinion, the best part of the SHS program. And I think this is going to sort of help show that. Um, it's fun to navigate the repertories too, but I just want to show the um, I want to show the comparison. So I'm going to get out of stomach chapter. I'm going to go look for a rubric for rubrics about obstruction of the nose alternating with discharge. And so to get to those um, picture icons again, I can hit my left arrow. Here they are. I could also come over here and click nose on the left pane. But either way, it's up to you. I'm gonna find nose and click it. And now I wanna find again, obstruction uh, alternating with discharge. So first I'll type in OBS and go look for obstruction. Here it is. And uh, you know, I want to see if maybe it has alternating with discharge in the sub rubrics. So I'm going to go into obstruction by hitting the right directional arrow. Now I'm looking at the sub rubrics of obstruction and I'll put, I'll just go try, I'll go look for it. I'll put DIS. Now this is with discharge. So I don't want obstruction with discharge. We want obstruction alternating with discharge. But let me go further into discharge and just see because I, you can see that discharge has the plus sign next to it. That means there are sub rubrics. So I'm going to hit the right directional arrow. And this isn't, this isn't what I'm looking for either. It's more sub rubrics certainly, but it has nothing to do with what I'm looking for. So I'm going to go back to back one step with the left arrow. Um, and I'm just going to go back one more. Um, and so here's this obstruction stopped. Um, you can always take that to a clipboard and organize later. And now I'm gonna look for discharge within the, the, the nose chapter. I'm gonna type DIS here and you can see it there, discharge. <clears throat> and I'm gonna look at those sub rubrics. And you can see again, the order of the chapter, you've got sides, you've got times but I'm gonna go past that. Um, I'm gonna type alternating and just see what I get. I'll be on this, nope. Um, I'm going to type obstruction here and see what I get. Offensive, no. Okay, so sometimes you have to find, uh, let me also, I'm gonna type ALT for alternating, ALT. And I get alternate states. Let me try one more time to see if it, Okay, yeah, so I'm not finding exactly what I want here. Um, I wanted obstruction alternating with discharge. So now what I'm gonna do, um, and somebody who knows the repertory is really well might've been able to go straight to something that you know could have been more useful. Um, but I'm gonna come up here to global search now and I'm going to type obstruction. Whoops, got to spell it right. I always do that. Obstruction. I'm just going to try type the two words obstruction and discharge. Because in global search, you want to keep the terminology simple. You don't want to put little words. You don't, you know, you just want to keep it simple to find the most. Uh, and I'll show you something else we could have done here after this. So I'm going to hit return. And now you can see I'm in global search. And then I'm in the complete nose chapter. Here we have nose obstruction stopped alternating with discharge. There it is right there. Um, and so you know what I didn't do before when I was in obstruction, I didn't go look for alternating. So I looked for discharge when I was under the sub rubrics of an obstruction. And so, you know, you have to really be thinking and be on the ball when you're navigating those repertories. And I, <clears throat> I had not put ALT under obstruction to find this one, but I found it in global search that easily. Now, <clears throat> also in the global search window, you don't want to, um, you don't want to put 
proximity language when you're finding rubrics. It, it doesn't matter if you do or not. You can, actually, let me, let me back up and say, you can use the numbers, but they won't matter. But if you start using the proximity language about sentences, paragraphs, sections, or in the same remedy as, you're not gonna find any rubrics whatsoever. <clears throat> now, the, the thing I like about keeping it real simple up here and not putting too many words is it gives me choices. You can see here, it does give me the rubric I want, but it also allows me to kind of scroll and see, see some other options, you know, and see what else is available to, you know, maybe there's something else that's very pertinent to my case. Um, and you can just scroll and see that. But on the other hand, <clears throat> and by the way, let's go look at the reference library while we're here. And you get 14 options here, not that many, um, but that's because without the proximity language, we've asked the program to look for obstruction and discharge, those two words together in our Materia Medica. And if you were to separate those, you will have more than 14, I can guarantee you that. <clears throat> because now you can see how many more you have because you've allowed the program to look in a broader sense. Now let's say that we want to just hone in directly on that rubric about alternating. And so we can put the word alternate here and we can activate this. And if we're looking, if we're honing in, you know, and we're looking for the rubric, and there it is. This is the one that we want. So it depends on what you wanna do. Do you want to give yourself um, more options to look at? Then just put a couple of words. You wanna find the rubric, see if you can do that. Then, you know, add a little more detail up here. Let's see what happens on the Materia Medica side when we have th these three words up there in global search. We're gonna hop over here. And you can see we only have one remedy where in the Materia Medica, those three words were actually together. But if we come up here and we put separation between the words, then we activate this search. Now you can see over in the reference library, we have many more choices because again, we've broadened that search. We've allowed the program to look for those three words but there can be four words between them. Any questions so far? Yes, there's another question on global search, uh, Lucy. Okay. Uh, Lisa is wondering um, how she could distinguish between, using global search, how she can distinguish between three kinds of candida overgrowth. Uh, oral, vaginal, and abdominal pain in candida overgrowth? Well, I mean, I guess there are multiple ways to come at that. Um, you know, you can do candida yeast. Um, I'll think of, there are probably some other terms, but let's go with these two. I would just start here real simply and activate this search. And what happens is, you see it comes in by chapter. And so interesting that there's nothing in the complete there. Let's go down to the reliable. And again, it comes in by chapter. And so the stomach, this relates to yeast in the stomach and they are using the word yeast, not candida. Um, female generalities. Um, let's go back up here for a minute to the complete and um, interesting that, okay, now here's where I would, I would say to myself, well, there's this really, um, let's go look at this in the actual repertory and see if there are any cross references. So I'm going to double click on that, take myself to the, take myself here to the actual, um, you know, the actual rubric in the repertory, and I'm going to turn on cross references. The fact that there's a zero 
uh, uh, remedies there tells you that it's a cross right. right. There is no, there are no remedies in this and it was grayed out. That's why it was grayed out in global search because there are no, there are no remedies in this. However, I wanted to go to this rubric in the actual book and I wanted to see what the cross references are. And so you can see mouth general, well, that's really general, but APSA, APSA, however you pronounce that, um, that's another terminology that you're going to find in the repertories about you know, yeast or candida. So if you were to come up here and use that word, and then activate that search, that's going to, that's going to make your, um, your search, you know, much, much more useful. I love the cross references because they, you know, they'll, they'll give you that terminology. So, you know, you're thinking one thing. And so they put that sort of placeholder rubric in there. And, but the actual rubric is in a different language is in that more, maybe a more antiquated language sometimes. Um, and that's how you can find those words. So here, if we go to mouth, now we're back in global search and here, here you have it. You see in, in all kinds of description of it, maybe it's a burning uh, candida, apse, apse. How do you pronounce that, Maggie? <laughs> uh, apse, I think, is it? Apse, okay. Um, and so did that answer your question, Lisa? Hopefully. Uh, Alicia is, is just asking, would Candida be in the complete repertory in the clinical section? It but might if it be. Was, Let's go look. Uh, if it was, Global Search would have found it, wouldn't it? It absolutely would. We didn't get that far in the chapters because I got hung up on the mouse. But here we are, and let's go look. We're in the complete um, clinical. This is all that's there in the, in the complete 23 mm -hmm. under clinical. You don't even have the word candida, interestingly. Let me see if it's in Murphy's, because Murphy's all, or Ezeaga also has, probably has candida listed. Yep. Mm. This, is, this is a repertory that has a lot of diagnostic terminology, Ezeaga's. So there's that. And then you can see it in the pediatric chapter as well. And Murphy's also, let's go look there. He also tends to have some clinical language under C. Let's go there. Yep. Um, however, I'm seeing that word aptus again. Don't, oh, here's the word, here's, here's candida. So it depends on the repertory as to what the language is going to be. Mm -hmm. Lisa is saying there's not very many remedies, not very many results, but as you say, you just need to look at a number of repertories. Yeah, you just need to look at, at repertories. Um, let's go back to the complete. Let's go back to the mouse. And here you have, there are 283. Or maybe if you hone it down to it's a burning candida in the mouth, um, 17 remedies. You know, if you, can, if you can hone it, maybe it's children, nursing. You know, just yeah. depending on what your situation in the case is. Um, let's go to, I think you had mentioned the female. Let's go there. Um, and here you have 30, 30 remedies that are that apply. What about in abdomen? Abdomen, let's go there. Yeah. Not so many at all. Um, you can also go look into a different repertory. Let's go look at reliable and see if they've got an abdomen. Okay, it's very similar stomach. Okay. So in that case, um, if you're not seeing the, the, the bigger result, you might just come down to generalities. Um, or actually that's not what you want either probably clinical. what's that maggie clinical clinical didn't have a lot let's um or go back to as a yoga gyn or pediatric um Murphy's clinical, you know, something like Murphy's, you would just have to take something more general yeah. if you're not finding uh, what you want in your chapter related to it. Okay. 
Any other questions? Um, yeah, I have another question here from Lena. She says, sometimes I find myself having a load of symptoms on my clipboard. I assume she means on my clipboard. So obviously I did something wrong, but I also don't know how to select and delete it again. Somehow I couldn't select the whole thing. It did not even fit on my screen. So if you have in error, put a lot of symptoms on your clipboard, how do you delete the symptoms or how do you delete the clipboard? I'll start with the easy part. Um, if you delete a, to delete a clipboard, you can simply hover on it, right click, which on a Mac is a control click. If you have it set up for the default and delete. Um, you can also double click this icon above the clipboards and open up this menu and delete it this way if you select it. Now, I'm not sure I understood the other part of your question. You're saying that to, to delete individual or, or to delete, if you have a lot of rubrics, it's the control and A to select them all rather than having to delete them individually. Oh yeah, you absolutely can. You can contr control or command if you're on a Mac, A, that selects all of them. And then um, you just command or control. Uh, oh no, sorry, then you just hit delete. You just hit delete on your keyboard. You can also right click and hit delete, but that's that's a, a, an extra click. Mm -hmm. So there's this option here with a right click menu. So yes, control A. Do you want me to throw a few more rubrics on this clipboard? Oh, okay, okay. So she's saying, but I already have good symptoms on my clipboard that I don't want to delete. So I think if you had about like 10 symptoms on a, on a clipboard, how would you easily select eight of them without having to go one by one? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me, let me just throw, throw a couple more on this clipboard so I can actually, you know, have a visual. Just going to throw a few more rubrics on. Here we go. Okay. So. Okay. Uh, Helena had 113, but we, we can show it with, with just a number, Helena, as well. Yeah, it's the same, it's the same concept. So you hold down the command key or the control key if you're on Windows, hold that down and you can select multiples like that. Boom, boom, boom. Holding down the controller command key allows you to select multiples and then you delete. Okay. Okay. Um, and Lisa would like you to show the history button, please. Use of the history button. Yes. Okay. Um, so the history button is over here in the chapter. Um, it tells you where I've been in this chapter. Let's get out of the chapter and go to the main page. Um, oh, there is none there. Oh, here it is. Here it is. So you come here on the left pane. Oh, that tells you which repertory you've been in. Um, okay, so it, you can do it in the chapters. Mm -hmm. So when you're in head, come over here. And it gives you any of the chapters. So open up a chapter. And this icon here shows you the history of rubrics that you've been to, regardless of the fact that you're in the head chapter. You can, you can go ahead and click on this nose rubric in your history, and you're taken straight to that. Okay, should we do another um, finding rubrics versus global search? Or is there another question? No, nothing else at the moment. Okay. So another rubric, um, pain in the coccyx is worse sitting and worse rising, for, even worse rising from a seat. So uh, there's a rubric. So here, in, let's go back, to, let's get to, um, Let's get back here to our um, reliable and I'm going to go into back because whenever you're dealing, you know, with a part of the back, of course you go into back and I'm going to go to, I'm going to type on my keyboard COC and it does take me straight to coccyx. Okay. And there are, um, there are no, okay. So there I've found that I, I could take that to a clipboard, but actually now that I'm thinking about it, I want pain in the coccyx. So uh, in the back chapter, I'm going to type P-A-I. 
okay, so here's pain. I'm gonna go into those subrubrics, hitting my right directional arrow. Now I'm gonna type COC. There we go. Um, and of course, it's related to um, sitting for long periods and even worse, rising. So I wanna go into these subrubrics and explore this. I'm gonna hit my right directional arrow to get myself into the subrubrics here. And I'm gonna type SIT for sitting right there. Uh, it's got zero. That means I need to go further in because you can't put a zero rubric onto the clipboard. You must go into these sub rubrics. So I'm going to hit the right directional arrow while sitting. Okay. And I could even look further. There's more sub rubrics. Let's see if it mentions something about um, worse rising. I'm going to go into those sub rubrics and no. Okay. Um, so I could take this to the clipboard and I'll go backwards with my left arrow. And I want to now think about rising and it's right there. You can see above sitting. So I'm gonna move my um, highlight up by hitting the up arrow, another zero rubric. So I'm gonna go into those sub rubrics with my right arrow and aggravated. So there's that. All right. Now, I wonder if, you know, you could somehow um, find, you've got the two, but you wonder, I wonder if I could find some information where the, 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 it's together, you know, you've got the sitting and the rising in one rubric. Let's find out. <clears throat> the easiest way for me in my mind <clears throat> to do that is to come up to global search and put in and put in the keywords and we'll see, we'll see what we get. I'm gonna hit return. <clears throat> and you can see the result isn't huge. I've got, um, you know, the kind of rubrics that might be used for confirmatory, but this isn't really the kind of thing I wanna base a case on. I, I, I kind of wanna see more information, um, you know, I know some homeopaths do sometimes prescribe <clears throat> on a single remedy rubric, um, but I've never been comfortable doing that. So, so here we have after sitting, unable to rise. That's not quite what we want. Uh, you know, the this one with lachesis is could work, but again, they're so small. Now let's pop over to the reference library tab and see if you know. Of course, I could go look at other repertories. Let's look at the reliable, same thing, small rubrics. Let's pop over to reference library tab, no result. Now, this is what I wanna show you. The proximity language makes all the difference in reference library. Let's come up here and put the space of four so that now we're allowing the program to look for those three words, but they can have some four up to four words between them. And I'm gonna activate this search. And you get the same thing in repertories because putting the proximity language doesn't change your repertory result. But I'm gonna hop over here to reference library. And now you see it made a difference. Now you can see six remedies and you can start reading details and you know see which ones apply to your case. Unable to rise. worse after stool, you know, so you could take all this to your clipboard as well. Um, just by hitting this, this little clipboard with a plus sign. And you could, because those would probably be somewhat pertinent to your case, I would think, since you've got, you know, such. Um, Can you just show those going to the clipboard, um, Lucy, and what they look like, what that rubric uh -huh. looks like in the clipboard? Oh, sure. So I had hit this to get it on the clipboard, to get this, um, on the clipboard, let me show you what that looks like. Those reference library search queries always come into the clipboard RL-S and you can see the query looks exactly as it does up here in global search. Coxsox within four words of sitting, within four words of rising, six remedies. And in the graph, you see it here. Lucy, if you wanted to do another search, um, Elizabeth has um, a patient 
who gets uh, leucorrhea every time she eats cheese. Oh, okay. All I right. I was wondering how you could search for something like that. Okay. Well, my, my brain is telling me to come up to Google search. Um, how do you spell leucorrhea? Hmm. Let me not guess. Let me just um, go. L-E-U-C-O-R-R-E-A. Okay, thank you. So leucorrhea, cheese. Those two key thoughts I'm gonna to put together. Let's see what we find. Okay, so you do get the smelling like old cheese. And that's not what you're that's not what you're wanting. No. Um, at all. So let's just check a couple more repertories and see if we get the same thing. Okay. Um, Murphy's, yeah. Let's um, let's put some separation between these words. And again, I pick four randomly. You can do three, five, any number you want up there. I've just, today I've decided to do four and I'm gonna activate this search. And I wanna go into the reference library and we get, we get um, okay, so you know, um, this all has to do with the smelling like old cheese. So what I would do then is, I think you're gonna have to take cheese aggravates mm -hmm. and leucorrhea as two separate mm -hmm. thoughts into the clipboard. And so you can easily find cheese aggravates. There is, um, I had a quick look, Lucy, and there oh. is um, a leucorrhea after eating. So that's another rubric that you could take. Yes, absolutely. She's, so we'll find she's aggravates mm -hmm. and we'll go to the um, generalities chapter. We don't want ears. She's aggravates. I'm just curious to see what's under stomach. Okay, we don't want that. So what we could, we, you know, you would take that and then you come up here to L-E-U-C-O-R-R-E-H, uh, eating. Discharge after eating. One is that the one you found, uh, Maggie? Yeah. All right. And the career discharge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. So you've got it's a, a single remedy rubric. Let's see if the reliable has it has the same one. Let's see if Nairs. Sometimes I like to know Nairs. Let's see if Suggesta has the same. Okay. So there's some in the reference library, I think. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We'll go there next for sure. Let's go there. Okay, and so we have two remedies. Yeah. However, uh, we, one of them doesn't apply, but let's put a little distance between these two words. And again, you pick whatever number you're feeling in the, in the moment, and we'll go back to reference library. Now we have seven, um, and the chamomilla we're already familiar with. Um, this other one has to do with like it's a corrosion. Pulsatilla has the disposition to leucorrhea, elements from eating rich. No, that's, well, you could make an argument that cheeses can be rich. Um, pulsatilla might apply there. So that is, So, um, and let's look at the clipboard. So there are 37 remedies that are aggravated by cheese. Um, and let's see, chamomilla, where's chamomilla? Let's, if you go to go to remedy and type in the remedy, you can see where it is. And wow, it's not, e chamomilla is not even something that's aggravated by eating cheese. That's interesting. So, any ideas, Maggie? Sorry, I was popping into something else there for a minute. Oh, that's okay. I was just uh, commenting that chamomilla is not even found in the rubric that um, cheese aggravates. And yet, over here, leucorrhea, worse after dinner. Um, okay, so 
so you've got it, I get, you know, and that's very small. So leucorrhea eating, that's chamomilla pretty much, um, or worse, worse from eating cheese, which cuts chamomilla out of the picture, if you're looking at that rubric only. So I wondered if chamomilla was tried, but actually if eating though in general causes leucorrhea, that's different from if cheese does. So I think I would go with the worse from cheese and kind of, it, and put more symptoms in. You could put, certainly put leucorrhea in by itself. Let's do that. Go down to the female chapter. That's a rather large, <clears throat> that's a rather large rubric. So if you can possibly hone it down in global search, you always see the sub rubrics under the main rubric. And so these other ones are sub rubrics mm -hmm. in global search. But if you don't see anything that applies, you can certainly just take that to the clipboard. And yeah, then, so Elizabeth is saying that all of her other emotional symptoms point to lactases. So oh. she just SPT. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Let's see. Elena is saying, what if you take vaginal discharge and cheese? Would that be different to leucorrhea? Um, I think this rub if we let's go back to global search. Um, here I see leucorrhea discharge in the same rubric. But let, um, let's see if we can find discharge without leucorrhea. And I'm gonna I'm gonna um, filter this for the female chapter by doing this. And you see the leucorrhea discharge came up again. Um, so they're putting those two thoughts together in the rubric language. Let's see if we're, sometimes the reliable is a little bit different. Okay, so actually here, here you don't have the word leucorrhea. Oh, but it bloody, we don't want bloody. Let's go down to, here we go, right there. So you could certainly take that as well to the clipboard. Any other thoughts? I think it's gonna be a matter of taking a few rubrics. Mm -hmm. It doesn't look like there is anything specific to right. the Korea eating right. cheese. And up here in global search, I certainly could have put both words with a forward slash. And that way the program, you know, finds them both. So anytime you can think of synonyms, I highly recommend that you do use them in global search um, with that forward slash in between them, because that, that does bring up more, more result just like what we had, remember, with the candida and the yeast and the aptha, um, we really found a lot with aptha, whereas we didn't find a whole lot with the other two words. So synonyms are, are great. Oh, we have a synonym says, finder. Thank you. What? He says, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. We have a synonym finder within SHS, but um, it's not as complete as I hope it is one day. So I just recommend going out to the internet to thesaurus. And then you can find all kinds of synonyms. Okay, any other questions, Maggie? Um, Helena would like to look at the, the grade um, option within the clipboard and grading rubrics and the effect that has on the graph. Okay. So we've got a hodgepodge of things in this clipboard for sure. But um, I'll show you, let's, 
let's just pick, um, let's pick the no nose obstruction, for instance, or yeah, let's pick, we'll pick this one and we'll grade it. So I'm gonna right click. Let's say that the nose obstruction is, is the, the most characteristic symptom in this case. You, you really want it to be weighted heavily. So instead of it just being equal with all the others, I'm gonna give it a grade of three. And did that change the graph, Maggie? I forgot to- No, I can Oh, okay. let's try grade it. Okay. Oh, and by the way, you, you can also just highlight the rubric and um, hit the number on your keyboard. That's a keyboard shortcut. You don't have to right click. I'm going to bring that down to default um, by hitting zero, one. Wait, why didn't that work for me? Okay. Um, um, I'll pick a smaller, I'll pick up, I'll pick something smaller. So we're looking at sulfur, Cali by silica as the top three. Mm -hmm. I'm going to highlight this one and grade it, um, by hitting a three on my keyboard. Okay, good. It did work that time. Mm -hmm. Oh, it didn't change it, did it? It didn't change the order. It changed something within the table there. So the first three are the same. Did, what else do you think might have changed? I'm not sure. Okay. <laughs> I'm not sure either. I might have to bring this up with development. Um, I think so, yeah. I yeah, guess. I'm going to bring this up with development. I feel like it should change more. And again, I'm going to try to bring it back down to nothing. There, it worked that time. So I highlighted, hit zero. It took the grade off. So I'll do one more um, like rubric that I'd written down. up here. Um, let's say somebody um, dislikes warm food and they also hate meat. They have both of those things. So I can go into the repertories. Let's do that first. I'll be back over here with my, um, my reliable and I'll go into generalities, which is where all the food things are. I'm going to type FOO to get to the food things. It's one of those zero rubrics because you have to dive into it and, and specify. So I'm hitting the right directional arrow and I'm going to hit first meet, MEA. There it is. Again, you've got to specify. Um, anytime you have these food and drink things, you know, you have to just, you have to tell the program desire, um, aver averse, aggravate or ameliorate. So let's go into meet. And it, it probably gives you some other options as well, but um, they're averse to meet. So we're gonna choose this, put that on the clipboard. Now they're sub rubrics. Let's go in further and see if there's anything that might apply. Um, meet aversion. And I'm just gonna put the WA to see if warm food is, no. Okay, so let's go back to food and drinks. I'm coming up here to the breadcrumb string and I'm clicking here. I'm just showing you a different way to get back. I could have also hit my left arrow. And now I'm gonna type WA um, and you see warm. I'm gonna move my cursor down to warm and I'm gonna hit the right directional arrow. And it, it's sort of an aversion there as well. So I'm going to, and interestingly, I just want to go to this sub rubric, warm food and go into that. Okay, interesting how they did that. So I'm just gonna say that there's an aversion to warm food. Now, I wonder if we could somehow put these together if we you know, look in, look in the global search and look at Materia Medica. I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna type in um, meat, warm. Actually, what did I type in? I was practicing. Meat aversion. Ah, you know what I, I did? I put warm. I put warm. Now, I'm not saying the meat is warm. I'm just typing those three words. And I could have put warm at the end of aversion as well. But warm and meat and aversion 
those three words. Let's activate this search. Okay, it, you notice it went straight to the reference library tab. That's because there's no rubric that has those three words in it. No result found, but as I said before, let's separate the words with proximity um, numbers there. And I'm gonna activate this search. And now you see the result. So that, that really helps if you are looking for Materia Medica result um, to separate your words with some distance. So we have 20 remedies and you can see um, thirst for warm drinks, that doesn't apply, but right here at the top, calcarea, aversion to meat and warm food. That's exactly what I want. That's exactly what I'm looking for. So I hope, I hope I've made that real clear about um, how it's, it's so good to use your Materia Medica um, to try to find information to pull to a clipboard, um, but it's, it's good to know exactly how to do that using that proximity language. Any questions? Um, Lucy, when you're in the clipboard and you're looking at a rubric on your clipboard, how can you easily find that rubric in the repertory? Oh, easy, easy peasy. So you just right click and you um, view the rubric in the repertory. You can go straight to it in the repertory this way. Took me right to it. Um, we have a f another few minutes or so. Um, what else could I show you all? Or if there are any more questions, here's your chance. We've got another few minutes. What, there's one here. Oh, okay. When I want to read the section of what I see in reference works coming up, this is Helena. When I want to read the section of what I see in reference work coming up, sorry, Helena, I don't actually understand that question. Like this section here, over here when we're, we're in, it's not reference works really, it's reference library in the new program, SHS. Anytime you, each one of these lines represents a mm -hmm. reference. If you wanna read further, mm -hmm. you just simply click on a line mm -hmm. and it pops up. So you can read it here. My gosh, that's a big blurb. I've never mm -hmm. seen one that big, actually. Um, I thought it usually just gives a little bit and you can read more if you go into reference mm -hmm. library with a double click. That's a big one. So um, you just click on a line to read more. Aversion to warm food, meat and alcohol, that's Ignatia. Uh, and that's from a um, that one doesn't have very much information because I think it's from, where, well, let's double click and find out where it's from. I just double clicked, oh, Clark's characteristics in Ignatia. So you see how I did that? I double clicked. Yeah. Now I'm in reference library and that reference that you saw in global search, um, which it's CLCH, Clark's characteristics. You can always double click to go figure out what the reference is. Um, we also under help have the author abbreviations. I think it's probably easier to double click and go to reference library, but you always have your author abbreviation list if you want to go look at it. Mm -hmm. um, Blair is asking, is there anywhere where there's a description of the books? Um, I have used Mac since 1984 and now I'm trying to learn SHS, but there are so many new repertories and Materia Medica. Mm -hmm. Is there a description of them? You know, some of them do have a section, not all. So if you come in to reference library under books, um, you know, and like, let's open your cures and so you can open up a book's chapters by clicking on the plus sign. And so for instance, about the book, some of our, some of our books, repertories, Materia mm -hmm. Medica, any have an about section and some don't. So it, it really just depends on the book. So here you can read about, you know, you can read the in introduction. How is the table constructed? What, uh, when did it come out? June, 2017, you know, um, but 
you go into something smaller, like this lion ear. Interesting. I've never read this before. Um, but if, yeah, if you click here, it's all you have is a little bit of natural history. So you have an author name, but not a whole lot more information about the year it came out or anything. So it, again, it depends on the book. I think the, the larger books are, you know, from the more renowned authors, maybe would tend to have more information about their books. Ravarki, here's her about. I hope I answered your question. Um, Blair is saying that you can't read about books the way you're showing there unless you have purchased them, obviously. Oh, um, correct. You, know, yeah. you need to be in your SHS to, to be able to open up about that book there. So, correct. You know, is there a list elsewhere where we show all of the books? Oh, um, not all of them, certainly. On our website, we have um, new releases. And so we will have some information about, um, for instance, we've got a Suggesta page. We have some of the newer books under new releases. But even um, like other releases, have some information on some of the older books, but certainly not all of them. I mean, we have, we have like a thousand or so books, you know, in our capability. Um, you have the capability of having over a thousand books in your program, and we don't have information on all of them. But um, some of the larger ones, certainly. This is about the complete um, Gandhi's book, the Saint Seditions Repertory. Vermeulen books. So on our website under new releases, you'll find some information. And otherwise I would just Google the book and try to find about out about it on the internet. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Lucy. Um, Alicia wants to know, can we email a clipboard? Well, you can download a clipboard, let's see. Do you see here, I can download this graph image. So once you have downloaded, then you could certainly paste that into an email. I think this downloads the graph image only, not the actual rubrics, but then you can also, um, you could do a screenshot of the whole thing and email that image. Let me see what this does. Yeah, and you have some options here as well. Um, you can also, copy and paste the rubrics into like a Word document and email that. Or you could, I, oh, I don't know. I don't know if you can paste them directly into an email. Maggie, have you ever tried that? No. Yeah, I'm not sure. I haven't tested that. I know you can paste them into a Word document and you can attach that. Um, but, and then this is how you would do your graph by downloading that image. Mm -hmm. And then um, Elizabeth, I'll go ahead. Elizabeth uh, would like to know if you could um, show again how to open two repertories. Oh, sure. Absolutely. So you see, I have two open here and I could open a third. Um, it's a matter of a right click. So I've got reliable up there. I've got complete. I'll open theirs on the right pane. It's a right click to get that message open in a new window, then you regular click the message. So now I've got three repertories up and I could go back and forth between them. You can do the same thing here in uh, reference library. You know, you just right click on a book to add it to another tab over on the right side. Um, you can also, in a way, do it in global search. Let's say that you have one search that you did and then you, you want to keep that intact and you want a new search. So here we have the one. Let's erase that and do fear, dark. To open this in another tab, 
I'll hit this plus sign. And now I've got two tabs and I can go back to my old search very easily. You just click on it and activate it again. So yeah, there, there are multiple ways to have multiple tabs. Uh, you can also do it in patient management. So here's a new patient tab ready to go. Um, you know, you could come here and open a couple of, let's see, I do actually have a couple. And you can open both of these. And you can see now that I've got both of those here in patient management. We have uh, one final question. Okay. Let me see. Anita is asking how to find a rubric for a patient who is trying to do too much and are therefore exhausted. Well, here we are in Reliable. Let's go into the mind. Let's see if we've got exhaustion here in mind. EX, I'm going to put in. Exhaustion. Ah, okay. So this has, um, now this is one way. This is just the first way I'm looking at it. So exhaustion is a zero rubric. It doesn't have sub rubrics. I'm going to turn on the cross references here. I don't keep my cross references turned on because um, they, they take up a lot of space. So here we go. It, prostration of mind, mind, brain fog. fag. Now this, um, this may not be exactly what you're looking for. Um, you're, you're talking about doing too much. So maybe busy. You could also look up the rubric busy, B-U-S. Whoops, let me do that again. I typed it wrong. B-U-S, busy, bustling. Um, and you've got activity, desires the activity in a hurry, industrious. And again, you have to remember that rubrics equal pathology. And so industriousness it doesn't necessarily have to be pathological, but if it's a rubric, you can you can assume that it's a pathological form of industriousness. And so you might want to use that one or the busy and bustling. Um, cannot rest when things are not in the proper place. That may not apply. And you notice that busy and bustling also has the sub rubric. So you can certainly go look further. Busy and bustling, fruitlessly, you know, just somebody who has to stay busy. Um, fruit is away. So I hope I helped. Yeah, there's a, a bustling weakness with. So is that yes, with weakness, bustling with weakness. And you can go into those sub rubrics. So in what's there, everything falls out of his hands. Okay. okay. That's a confirmatory, if ever there was one. So um, I hope that helped. Okay, that's all questions covered. All right, thanks everyone. I appreciate you all being here. I hope you learned some new things today and our next training will be in two weeks, the intermediate advanced training that's on um, the 26th of May with Rupali. All right, thanks everyone. I hope Bye. you have a wonderful weekend. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.